sometimes I just have the thought, like, do I want to make this work? It's a better, higher quality question. Like, do I want to show up and make this work? It'll really pull out of you whether the work that it might take to get the result, if that is a priority for you or not. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast for female entrepreneurs looking to scale their business by mastering their time, money, and drama. I'm your host, Jessica McKinley, founder of What's Happening Coaching, a life coaching program that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. Hi, hapsters. It's April. Are you feeling really spring in my spring floral, um, moo moo, if you will, (laughs) looks cuter when you're sitting than when you're standing, honestly, but I have so many things to shout out today. So I'm just going to immediately dive in. First of all, of course we have a hapster of the week, but I'm going to let you hang on in build anticipation for that one. While I shout out a couple of listeners who are not clients yet. Maybe they aspire to be clients or maybe they don't even, maybe they just love to listen to the podcast. Maybe they're not quite my ideal client. Maybe they don't own a business yet, or they're just a professional and they're using the tools, but I've gotten so many, many messages specifically this week and last week from listeners, giving me real tangible results that they got from listening to the podcast over the last couple of months. So I couldn't let them this go by without sharing this. So number one, just a couple of shout out loves for the podcast. Uh, wow. Episode one Oh one is fire listening to it. Now you're inspiring me to relook at my goals and dream bigger. That is from Natalie. So excited for you, Natalie, for those of you who listen to episode 101, we were talking about all of the like zooming out. And I shared with you a lot of my bigger goals of wanting to have a birthday party with, at an art gallery where, and to record a music album and to think about your life more holistically in a way that just lights you up. Um, so I got a lot of love on that episode. I also, Recently got a text from Denise saying, thanks so much from, for our chat last week, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, you can DM me on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. I love to connect with my listeners. I always complain about how this platform just doesn't have a great way for me to connect with you guys. You guys get to connect with me every week and I feel like I'm missing out on our relationship. So connect with me over there. Let me know what you're, what you're struggling with, what you're trying to, uh, pursue. And I love to give any, any insights that I have during that time and just cheerlead you. Um, so Denise said, uh, thanks for our chat last week. I've been doing a deep dive of your podcast. It is fire, fire, fire emoji. So glad you're loving it, Denise. And then I'm so excited for the shout out of Lizzie Fox. Lizzie is a longtime listener who has been sharing her desire to get better with time management and money mindset for a long time. She has now become a masterful scheduler and goal setter just from applying specific episodes. She sits down, she listens, she takes notes, and she has screenshotted me screenshots of her schedule. And I'm like, this is pretty advanced. It looks advanced. It has deadlines. It's results oriented. It is specific and measurable and thoughtful and She shared, Jess, we must be psychically connected because I just got into my top choice grad school for creative writing and have been thinking of you so much and wanted to reach out because I truly got here with the tools I learned on the podcast. So I'm just so proud of you, Lizzie. I know that that has been something that has felt like a separate (laughs) part of your persona, right? This other part that just felt so impossible and out of reach or just distant in the future, maybe. And connecting and chatting with your future self has just brought her closer. And I want all of you guys to experience this of shortening the gap between your future self and your present self, right? Let meet her tomorrow, be her today so that you can meet her. Okay. So awesome way to go. I keep the feedback coming. I love it. Even if it's constructive, I'm open. 
But uh, okay, let's do the hapster of the week. Shout out to this week's hapster of the week, Krista Ferreira. Krista is in happening sessions. So happening sessions is underway. We are only one week into the calls and already so many of them are sharing their little wins throughout the week. We have our second call, um, this week. Well, actually when you guys are listening to it, it'll be like fourth call. And so I wanted to share that Krista said that she had been struggling with creating policies around customizations that people were asking for. If people were asking for travel, she didn't really have a clear policy for what she would charge. And she always found herself showing up to the conversation, feeling bad for the client, pity for the client in some way, having lots of thoughts that she was projecting onto them about it being too expensive if she charged for travel, which I know a lot of you guys suffer with this thought. And we said, create the policy. What do you want it to be? What would it be worth it for you to travel this distance? X, Y, Z, do the math, have it ahead of time and give your client, potential client, the opportunity to say no, but have your own back on the decision. And she did. She offered the price that she felt was too expensive for them that they were going to probably say no, but that it was what it was worth for her time. And they said yes. So I think that this is actually way more common than you guys think. I know when I first was in the process of raising my own prices, I felt the same way. I was constantly like, well, people say no at this price. So who's going to, nobody's going to say yes. If I raise my prices, we often think that because we don't yet have evidence to support that someone will buy at this price, but the more we're willing to believe in the possibility of our future with zero evidence that it can happen, the more it just happens, right? The more we get to reinforce that skill of believing in possibility and taking action in our business based on possibility, not based on evidence. So way to go, Krista, way to apply what we were talking about within week one and get what you came for. Shout out. Can't wait to see if you're getting these types of results in week one, stay on unco- and you stay uncomfortable the next, at the end of these six months, your business is going to be unrecognizable. So really pumped for you. Okay. Let's talk about the topic today, which is, are you using your tools or really all or nothing thinking against you, AKA, are you self-sabotaging? I have done a whole nother episode on self-sabotage, but it was from a completely different angle. And it was really more just a very real example of me going through my own self-sabotage when I was guest speaking on the Life Coach School podcast. And I shared with you what what my experience was of witnessing my own thoughts coming in that were like really aggressive towards me. And now I just this morning gave a live Q and a for a workshop for girls that are uh, looking to get results in improving their, their gut health, or they have some autoimmune diseases and they're working with a dietitian who's a client of mine. And I wanted to speak to them on the mindset piece so that they can combine the tools that they were using with the healthy mindset of pursuing a goal and understanding how to go through that emotional process without giving up. And I felt so inspired by the end of this call. These girls were just asking such incredible questions that I know you guys must be having that also apply to business. So These are some of the tools that you might be investing in right now that you can put this into context, this into context. So if you are currently in a coaching program or any kind of training program for your business, or you are signed up for a workshop or a training, or you have a educational or business focused podcast that you're listening to, even if it's just this podcast or you're in a Facebook group for networking for business, or you are any real business investment. Like for me, you can use this, these type of thought errors that I'm going to outline for you against yourself for anything. And I'll give you some real examples for me. And for some of these clients I was just working with thought error. Number one, 
is that there's just too many resources and not enough time. So this is where I see people approaching a program, coming in really excited about getting a result and then indulging in overwhelm, seeing a bunch of modules and feeling like they need to listen to all of the modules before they take action. Or they see that this has a bunch of extra bonus tools, or I didn't really know, but I could also learn how to do webinars. That wasn't exactly my plan, but I see other people getting results with these webinars. Should I do that? And then they spin and spin in overwhelm and confusion. And they think there's just not enough time and too many resources. I can't, I'm not doing this program right. And then they choose to fail ahead of time. They start to get really discouraged within the program. They feel like they're looking for evidence within their personal life that they don't have enough time to show up to this. And listen, it's tempting for all of us to do this. I've experienced it myself. I know you know, in my mastermind, I've done it now. I'm in my second round. So going on a year of being in it and I have all sorts of personal stuff happening. You guys know, I went through the hyperemesis where I was down for the count for several months and I paid good money for this mastermind. I was watching in the group as other people were getting results, were able to apply these tools in ways that I physically could not. And I could have stayed there and indulged in, I am not Like there's just not enough time for me to get the results that I wanted, but that thought stops me from getting any results. So I quickly saw it and I decided, okay, the antidote thought to that is really what are the results that I do want to get and how can I use this program for me and not against me? So anytime I looked at something that really wasn't the priority right now, I just thought, oh, that's not for me. That would be against me if I put that on my plate in terms of a resource. So notice we can even use resources and tools and access to tons of information and training against ourselves. If we, we know it's not a priority, but we feel like we, that danger word should be utilizing it or applying it or getting results from it. No, you only, you get to choose, you get to stay in the driver's seat of the results and what is your priority right then. So I just decided the only thing that I wanted to come and get from that mastermind was clean brain. Every week, I just wanted to come and clean up whatever was taking up the most space in my brain. That was going to be worth 25K in six months. And I also knew if I can clean up my brain once a week for six months, money is inevitable. So I held on to that thought as well. So I just quickly tabled anything that I was planning to do that no longer was a priority or made sense for me in my new circumstances and just decided, how can I still get the results that I want to come for? What do I want to build right now? And it was like resilience. I want to learn from this. I want to be able to turn what I'm going through into curriculum for my clients. I want to do evaluations on my thought. I want to get really good at experiencing negative emotion. Those are all skills, right? So figure out what you can and do want to do, and don't worry about all of the other resources. Thought error number two is It needs to go exactly the way I plan or not not at all. These are the perfectionist tendencies. So if you identify as a perfectionist, you want to listen up right now. If you are approaching a tool, whether it's a paid tool or a free tool, understand that everybody uses a tool to create something different. Just think about the magic of a hammer. Like someone can take a hammer or a paintbrush. Michelangelo can use a paintbrush and my son can use a paintbrush and create two wildly different results, right? And a lot of that is the way that you approach the tool, what you think about the tool, what how you show up to the tool. And now we don't want to compare ourselves, but we do want to understand if you are a if you are a perfectionist, that how the future of your results is all that matters. 
what's happened up until this point, if you picked up a paintbrush or you listen to a podcast and you just weren't quite in the right mind frame for it, or let's say, you know, I do these podcasts all the time. There's sometimes I finish press, like stop recording. And I'm like, that wasn't my best. I don't give it another second of like, that was a waste of my time. Maybe I should consider quitting podcasting. Maybe I should take a break or maybe I should go watch more modules on how to podcast. I'm like, all right, what do I want to do a little bit differently next time? Or how do I want to approach this? Perfectionist tendencies is rooted in the thought error that I'm unwilling to feel the negative emotion that comes with not getting the result that I want the first time you can handle it. This is a safety mechanism. Being a perfectionist is about your belief that if you don't get a result, it means something about you. It doesn't. It's just data. It's just the one dot on a plot of a graph of your entire life. And if you continue to make it mean something about you, those dots continue to go in a line. And that is what stagnation is. But if you just look at that dot and you're just like, oh, data onto the next, then it is more free flowing and you're way more likely to get through that low value cycle as my, my coach Stacy calls it a low value cycle where you're just like thinking a negative thought and then you make it mean something and you feel, and then you indulge in that feeling. You stay there. I just can get through those cycles quicker now because I don't attach the result to my self-concept, to who I am. Okay. So watch out for the thought error that you, it needs to be all or nothing, that it needs to be perfect or not at all. Are you willing to put out into the world B minus work and not make it mean that you're a B minus level business owner or a B minus level person? Are you willing to suck? Are you willing to feel the feelings that go along with sucking? And then in the pursuit of mastery, in the pursuit of getting better. Okay. Number three thought error is just the thought it's not working. (laughs) I see my clients do this in happening sessions and it's like, let's just stop everything right there. They'll be like scheduling. It's just not working for me or budgeting. It's just budgeting. Not for me. It's like the, the throw your hands up in the air energy of like, it's me and the thing there's just, we're not meant to be together. This is not who I am as a person, a scheduler, right? You must, when you approach any tool, whether it's a coaching program, a workshop, a podcast, anything, you just get to decide it's working regardless of the results that you see in the present moment. And that can be very difficult depending on how your brain is wired, especially if you're a good student. I find this for my clients who are really good students. They're trained to think uh, like a grade is reflection of whether what they're doing is working or not. And I actually think that that is horrible for applying it to the real life. Like the way that school works is not the way real life works. When you get a grade, it doesn't mean in general, it's not working. It just means that there's a gap somewhere, right? It doesn't mean it's not working. So I just always think whenever I'm doing a launch, sometimes I'll do a post and it'll get like 10 likes. And my thought isn't like, oh, Instagram's not working or my branding isn't working or my message isn't working. It's like, oh, it's working, but something here, there's a gap, right? It's like, and I think that what I mean is not like, this is more of like a zoomed out concept. Like you need to believe that a program is going to work for you, that a tool is going to work for you. You need to be committed for a certain amount of time, right? It's like, people that have this thought about relationships, they could be like, oh, this isn't working. Like I never really have that thought about a relationship. Sometimes I just have the thought like, do I want to make this work? It's a better, higher quality question. Like, do I want to show up and make this work? It'll really pull out of you whether the work that it might take to get the result, if that is a priority for you or not. But 
is it working or not is way too all or nothing. It it takes you out of the driver's seat and makes it about, puts like all of the responsibility on the tool or the resource or the program. It's like, oh, it's just not working for me, right? No, you can make, anyone can make anything work for themselves. It's like, I don't actually believe in the concept of the one. I believe that anyone could be with anyone and could fall in love. Now, some relationships are going to take a lot more work and effort. That's a fact, but some people are just willing to put in more work and effort and that's fine for them. Right. And in certain cultures and arranged marriages, like they just think of effort and work as a part of the part of the process. I actually had a roommate in college who had an arranged marriage. And I thought it was so fascinating and such a beautiful thing because the way that she thought about love was something that she had control over. And I was like, what a beautiful thing. Like she had such control and access over her thoughts about this person, about their relationship. Cause her thought was, oh, we're getting marriage. This is a commitment. It's going to work. And I was just like, wow, I love it. Right. So can we put That's an extreme example, but can we put that, that level of ownership over our results by just believing with any tool that we approach, it's going to work and drop the thought it's not working. Instead, if you want to reevaluate, you get to say like, okay, I've been doing this for a year. Do I want to continue to put in the effort in this way? Yes or no. And for me, that's been very telling. Oftentimes the answer is just like, I'll keep putting in effort until I die with certain results and in other results, I'm like, no, this is just not worth it. This is not worth my time. And the final thought error that has people self-sabotaging and using their tools against themselves instead of for themselves is I need to get my bang for my buck. This is slightly tied to this idea of showing up to a program that has all sorts of resources, all sorts of tools, all sorts of ways that you can apply it and all sorts of benefits. And you thinking that if you don't get all of them or spread yourself so thin or get all of the results within the first round of a program or the first month that you start doing something that you're not getting your bang for your buck. So for example, I Uh, just in this workshop, this girl was going to be going on vacation in the six month program that she had signed up for. She was going to be going on vacation for a bit. So she wanted to make sure that she didn't quote unquote fall behind. So she wanted all of the materials set to her in, in advance so that she could do it in advance of leaving so that she didn't miss out on anything. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting because to her, she thinks that time equals results. And that thought error, right. Is, is rooted in thinking like, oh, I need to follow this program exactly as it was outlined. And I cannot miss a day. And it would block her from really showing up and becoming more efficient within a program, which is a totally different skill, which is so worth your time. So right now, a a real example that I want to leave you with and how I make these advanced decisions in my business as personal things come up are not in these all or thinking way. So here's an example. I am going to be going on maternity leave in July and August when the baby comes for eight weeks. I will not, uh, my happening sessions will be continuing through. There will be guest coaches in there and that will be running just like normal but my one-on-one clients that they will be on a pause for eight weeks. And I am trying to decide what I want to do with the podcast, right? I want to, I know that my, my revenue is going to be like a little bit tighter during those months. Again, it's planned because I have the two group launches and not until October. So I know exactly what my revenue really will be, uh, during those months. And I'm like, okay, what is the best thing for me? So if I was in all or nothing thinking, if I had some of these, I'd be like, well, I can't get the most bang for my buck from my podcast production team. Like I can't like meet with them every week. I can't be checking in on the Trello boards. I can't be, I don't really want to be recording. I'd have to do things in advance. So like, I should just stop it. 
but I don't think all or nothing. I said, Hey, I want to have a meeting together. Let's talk about what the overall goal is for the podcast for the year. Do we think it would stop momentum to take a little break? Can we batch record some things? Do we take a four week break out of eight weeks or, you know, what, what is the results that I want to get and what is the math of it? So what would it cost me? Are there certain things that we can kind of offload and have it be like half of the service that they're providing for me? Um, if it's half of the work anyway, I mean, I don't know. So I have to have these conversations, but I'm open to it, not from a scarcity. Well, I got to get my most bang for my buck or it's not going to happen. Right. To me, what does that mean? Like Bang for my buck means I came and I got the best results that I could within the context of my life. Like, I don't look at what other people are doing and think like, well, they're getting more because they don't have a baby right now. So it doesn't make sense for me. Now, the answer might be to freeze it, but you won't know if, and you're going to start to make very emotional decisions in your business with these types of all or nothing. Another all or nothing question is, Oh, can I afford it? Oh, I can't afford it. Yes or no. Can I afford it? It's a horrible, low quality question. A better question there is, is this something I want to invest in? Yes or no. The answer is yes. What does it cost? What would need to happen in order for me to do this by when that gets your brain into movement, into creativity versus stopping it in its tracks right? So anytime you feel your brain getting into that all or nothing thinking, I want you to think about this podcast episode, come back, re-listen to it and offer yourself a higher quality question. If you're really feeling stuck or you feel like this is exactly you come and DM me on Instagram, give me your specific example. I would love to do another whole episode on this. If this is possible with more examples, because I know they are out there. Those thought errors that are stopping you from getting everything you want from a tool or a resource. Cause the tool or a resource is just there. Are you showing up with Michelangelo level capabilities to these tools? Are you showing up like my five-year-old <laughs> and giving up really quick? All right. You beautiful people have a gorgeous spring weekend and I will see you next week. Hey, hamsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to what's happening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening. W H A T S H A P P Y N I N G.com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. Again, that's happy. H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G and book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.